Hi and welcome back to the channel and uh, before we get into today's video I've first of all thought I'd make a public apology. Uh, the reason for the apology is the fact you may not have seen me over the last few weeks making any videos or seen me doing anything. Um, the reason for this is unfortunately, uh, for me that is, um, the old black dog is um, caught up with me um, and I've suffered uh, quite a bout of depression. Um, I made the decision once I knew the signs were coming on that I needed to remove myself from any face, facing points or avoid that sort of um, direct contact or anything like that, not to sort of like come across the wrong way if you see what I mean. So it, it's more of a, like I said, with the counselling I've had a few years ago, you recognise certain signs and things like that. So it's, it's, it's a way of, for me and how I can deal with things. Um, and obviously not to make me worse and obviously, you know, and, and so forth. So, um, so that's the reason I haven't done any facing sort of videos, but that hasn't stopped me watching your videos, liking and commenting where I can, as you probably noticed. Um, and, but like I said, I've enjoyed what you guys have been doing. It's been great. Um, but that's the reason why I've not been on. Um, it's just basically that it's to help me get back better again. That's, that's all it is. But I have in the background, been helping Mel and Jamie um, with editing their videos that they've recently done. I mean, the, the pandemic has not helped, I can tell you that now. Um, work has been flat out, but that's no idea here. That's not, that's not your issues, that's, that's mine. But um, but yeah, there we are. So um, yeah, so hats off to Mel and Jamie for finishing off their, well, Mel to finish off for Sylvan F Army uh, and collectively they've worked on their, on the Star Wars Legion Clone Wars droid and clone armies. Clone armies not seen yet. I'm looking at the actual tanks at the moment over there, and they look really good. Um, and I will put together a video with them uh, showing off the clone army at some time soon. Um, but yeah, as I said, I have been working in the background editing their videos, but I've purposely removed myself from most things in life just to get myself better again. Um, hopefully, touch wood. Um, I'm okay, <laughs> but. Um, but I, know, I needed I needed to just take a break. I've not had no leave this year, so so far this year, so I needed to take a break from everything and just have a memory dump, as they say. That's, that's basically it, really. But um, like I said, anyone who suffers from mental health or anything like that, you know, don't feel ashamed of talking about it. Um, we're all here. We'll all listen, and obviously, with the people who do suffer with it, we'll certainly be able to help you and guide you in the right ways and hopefully listen to what you've got to say and those that don't suffer from it hopefully this is an understanding and help you guys understand what it is and how it can catch up on people even the people you don't think it will um so that's that so wargaming nick uh, medieval wargaming nick i've not been evicted mate i'm back <laughs> so why are we here on this video today right today well a bit of a care package really um, obviously, in the last few weeks, all the talk and all the hype and that from Two Fat Lardies with the infamy, infamy rules that have been released. Um, I've been following this ever since the, as the community was announced in the community and its forums and that, and on the Facebook page back last year. So I've been sort of following it in the background and that, and um, really getting excited for it. Um, I was toying with the idea of actually building big armies and playing Hell Caesar, and I was doing all sorts of different things and to the strongest and everything but after reading about this watching the videos that uh, that, that rich clark and uh, put out it convinced me that this was the way to play ancients a totally bizarre funny way hilarious way of playing the game and get some cracking units on the table and effectively build what you like um so that's what i sort of have opted for i've gone going down this road um, I'm going to spin the camera around uh, and I'll get into the care package that I've got. So, pre-order bundle, I went all in, get all the cards, the tokens, um, the poker chips and obviously the rule book. Um, I thought that that was probably the better way of doing it because like with sharp practice and that, I don't normally use the cards for the reactivations, I do use the poker chips which I'll show you some of those in a minute of how I've done those. Um, and obviously I can keep the cards separately if I wanted to play a multiple different game. Um, oh, I've got an idea um, with this. A um, lot of things I've been reading on the Facebook page and that about it, that you can't play a multiplayer game. 
Um, I have come up with an idea of how it can be played, quite simply using one deck of cards um, and one set of order tokens. Uh, but more on that in a future video. Um, so what do you get for the all-in bundle? Well, obviously you get the rule book, and I mean, I'll go through that in a minute. I mean, it's a beautiful rule book. It's probably one of his best he's done, I think. Um, it's just, again, that's my opinion. Um, beautifully printed. The artwork on the front is superb. Absolutely beautiful. So good that I actually bought the print off of the artist who done it, because I, I just thought it's excellent. It's a lovely picture. Um, again, the artwork on the uh, the card pack here is, uh, again, excuse my hands, um, it, it is absolutely, again, superb in that. Um, so you get the game deck cards and you get the infamy cards, which I've got to one side a second. Um, then you get three lots of token, uh, MDF token boards. These are obviously some for the Romans, for the Testudo formation, uh, with the shields up, uh, as, a, as a Roman drill they can have, and some ammunition markers at the bottom there. Um, and then denoting again Romans for their close order and again some more ammunition markers and these are obviously for the barbarians ammunition markers and shield wall. Um, at the back here we have obviously the poker chips then you've got obviously your numbers for your uh, unit leaders um, and then obviously you've got the various Signa cards which you can paint up. And on the reverse side of it, it's the same, um, but obviously you get the Tempest Fugit uh, counter which ends the act or like it does in Shark Practice with the Tuffin uh, counter card. So we'll break one of these down individually and you can sort of see what's going on uh, from, from there. So we'll start off here then, first of all, um, with the poker chips and cards. So like I said before, um, up here, is the poker chips I, we've done for sharp practice. Um, sort of painted obviously red and blue with the different flag colors, red and blue, and the Tiffin card is a sort of jewel. And as you will see, like I said before, they are exactly the same. Obviously we're using the Roman numerals, um, and obviously the Tempest Fugit card is effectively the Tiffin card. It just basically ends the act for uh, Infamy Infamy, ends the turn, obviously, the chapter um, for sharp practice. Um, flag cards are the Signa cards for for this, and again, as I said, we're painting that red and we're painting that blue to represent obviously the barbarians and the Romans accordingly. Now they obviously correspond with your various cards, and I'll just get some of those out so you can see them. There's the um, Tempest Fugit, and and again, I just triple these down so you can sort of see leaders activations, the same sort of things that are on the poker chips. And obviously your various flags, blue, and you'll have red towards the back. So, like I said, you can use the cards, you can, or you can use the poker chips. Me personally, I like doing the old hand in the bag thing. It's quite good fun, really. And uh, so that's what we'll use. We'll use the poker chips, and I say paint them up as we've done very similarly for the uh, sharp practice ones there. So that's the that's the activation system and the cards. Again, the quality of the MDF. It's done by war bases, so yeah, I mean, everyone knows, if you know war bases, you know their quality, they're, they're very good. The print on the cards, like with the sharp practice ones, I see these are the game deck ones, these are very good. Um, good quality, good card, and uh, yeah, so it should be quite robust. I do advise, though, if you are using the cards, putting them in sleeves, and I'll show you some sleeves in a minute that I've used for the infamy cards. So that's the activation tokens, so I'll move on to the next lot. So next up is the Infamy cards. These also come in the box along with the game deck. Uh, so you get the game deck cards and these Infamy cards in that one set of deck of cards. Um, these you do need. Um, unfortunately, you can't get poker chips of these cards. Um, they do obviously are part of the aid of the game to play the game. Um, and what they are, I'll just get them right there. Um, so say so they're all nicely printed with the obviously with the laurels on the back and the gladius sword. Uh, good quality print. Turn them around. So you've got various um, sort of um, events and, 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 and things going on. Um, standard sort of game you play, each person gets one card, each or each side gets one card. Um, You'll see in the rule book there's a campaign system, and actually you can earn more of these infamy cards throughout for your for your army, and throughout the game you can also um, allow there is a chance of you getting more infamy cards. Um, you notice I've sleeved them. I've used 
Uh, Mayday Games uh, card sleeves, 63.5 uh, millimeters by 88 millimeters. Now you'll see they fit absolutely perfect. Um, Fantasy Flight do also do uh, one very close to this, but they're a bit more looser fitting. But if you want a tighter fitting one that fits nice and snug, then the Mayday Games one, 63.5 by 88. So that's, that's the Infamy cards. Again, there's lots of different sort of uh, types of intrigues and sort of um, uh, little events and little things that are happening, sort of narrative things that can happen in the game. Um, again, if you've watched any of the Larnie's videos on his play, playing the game, he actually does use the cards in that, uh, to quite effect actually. Um, and they're good fun. They just got another element to the game. Um, I hope in, in recent, in, in, in future times, that they sort of added something similar to Sharp Practice, because I think that it would certainly, again, enhance that game incredibly. So that's, that's the cards and that's the Infamy deck. So next up is the rule book itself. Um, I've already shown you the tokens, as you uh, briefly at the start of this, and, that, and they are what they are, and obviously they aid um, just game aids really for your units whilst you're playing the game. Um, so onto the rule book itself. Like I said, I think the artwork on this, obviously, obviously ignore the light just down there that's reflecting off the uh, glossy finish. But um, the rule book itself, the, the artwork I think is absolutely superb. It really does try and capture that essence of a, of the Roman legions and that going forward against the barbarian horde there. Um, lovely artwork, and as I said, I, I think this is one of the best that they've done. So opening them up sort of going through and I said I won't do a detailed sort of um, uh, review of it but I'll just sort of try and show you pick out some bits that I've noticed I thought it might be of interest to you um, various sort of terrain setting up your forces what terrain means to say what your forces are what your units mean very similar to sharp practice in that you know the unit type um, in there you've got unit type your warriors um, how many figures are in the unit with their strength what armor they're wearing is light, medium, and heavy armor, um, and no, obviously no armor. Mixed weapons for this particular auxiliary unit. Uh, how many points they cost? Aggressive, step out, sort of similar sort of things that you would see uh, from sharp practice. But um, the Romans have also got um, some set of drills that they've got, which is basically some skill, extra skills and um, um, and traits that the units can have to to perform, as well as what the barbarians have got their own sort of um, extra abilities for their units. So there's different types of formations, some of those you'll be obviously familiar with, with uh, Sharp Practice. Um, again, look at that, I mean, lovely artwork, as I said, beautiful, really, I mean, that up there, really nice. Uh, setting up the table, I think, is quite interesting. So your table is divided up into six segments of two foot square. And then, depending on where you're playing, I'll sort of show you this, so Britain, you've got Gaul, or Germania, or Italy, Italy or Italia. Um, you roll a dice for each segment, and that tells you how many hills are in that segment, how many woods, if you're playing in Britain, this is, um, marshes, habitations, and maybe river crossings, etc. And that sort of varies, again, depending on the land of where you're playing. So you can really set up some really interesting battlefields, I think. Um, eight scenarios are included in the book, and again, you can roll for those, or if you want to, you can pick the one you want to play. And they're quite sort of easy and straightforward to follow. So not too difficult really. There's a couple more there. Foraging party, that sounds interesting. Sort of general engagement. You've got an eight post attack up there and I think that's gonna be quite nice. An attack on a fortification. That I do quite fancy doing that. And obviously preparing to play, you've got your cards and your infamy cards, etc. Or as I say, you can use your uh, poker chips. That's the Force Morale chart. Though that is uh, free to download on Two Fat Lardy's um, Lard Island blog. Movement events, so very, again, very similar to Sharp Practice. And obviously you'll have combat um, events. So again, that sort of works very similar to Sharp Practice. Commanding your troops, obviously each leader... Um, status has a number of initiatives it can do in a command range and they can do certain things. Uh, so that's that. Uh, that's, there's there. Let's move along a little bit further. So movement, it's very similar to sharp practice in what you can do, how you move. Uh, shooting, it's, very, it's a little bit different in the sense that because obviously you've got, you've got armor now and um, how that works. 
like I said, I won't do a detailed review of it because um, there is one on online already. Um, it's combat, so it's melee. What I wanted to get up to is the forces and show you that. Oh, further, further, it's very good for the barbarians. Basically, your, your leaders are trying to sort of G them up before they go into the attack and that and make them frothing at the mouth and get them charging in as they do. Uh, force morale sort of works very similar, obviously, with the setbacks or the uh, bad things happens and things like that. So that's very similar. Tasks, like you are having sharp practice. And obviously the force lists. These are all the troop character uh, characteristics, <laughs> I'll get the words out in a minute, um, of the different troops, types, like I said before. And that's all the rules for them there. So again, nice handy little place to have all of those rules. That's what I like. So you can start off with a late Republic Roman army. So you're look, looking at sort of Caesar's forces and that. Um, and then you can obviously then goes into the, there's all the different units for that. Quite a few of them actually. Again, lovely artwork. I do love the artwork in this. Um, and then obviously early Imperial Rome, which is what force I'm going to pick. Um, and I'm going to go for initially the Imperial Legion, which has a Centurion as a status three warlord, Noctio as a status two, three groups of eight legionaries. Um, the next lot of, is a Supernurium leader, which is basically a leader of the group. You don't pay any extra for him for that force. He's going to come with that. Um, you can buy extra ones in this in the support list if you look opposite. Um, and a group of eight archers, group of eight um, auxiliary, both of those, I say, with the super numerium, I'll get that in a minute, numerium leader. <laughs> um, there is a flaw in the book, in the, in the Roman list. Um, there is a status list six missing, and that's for a status two leader for buying your support options. Richard has admitted that that's been missed off of the list, and that will be in an errata later date. Um, Mel's going to do... Uh, the Britons, and she is going to do the rebellious Iceni uh, and the Trinovians. Uh, so she's going to have a status three warlord, one group of ten nobles, warriors with chariots, status two leader, status one leader leading, three groups of ten warriors and two groups of tribal levy, and then obviously one group of, super, uh, of six tribal slingers with a supernurium leader. Now again. Your support elements and things like that will be based on the scenario you're playing and what you roll for. Um, but again, you can choose from there's their list there. Um, but yeah, you can choose from their support lists, which are down there. And obviously you can include extra units if you want. So depending on what you've rolled for. You've got the Gauls in there. That looks an interesting force. And the Germans, definitely, I think. If I was building a barbarian force, I think I may go Germans. But yes, I do like them. Um, and in the back, you've got a campaign system. Now, I've not fully read this yet, but what I do like about what Lardy's rules are, I think, um, is it Dux Britanniarum? They had a campaign system in theirs, and um, well, the whole game was based on a campaign, I think. And this is just a little fun little ladder system that, that Richard likes to do. Um, there you go there. And uh, I think it certainly will add to the uh, narrative and the style of the game that you can play. You can get status four leaders in the game, um, but the only way you can get a status four leader is to play the campaign, because you basically elevate yourself up to that point. Um, but there we are, That's, that is a brief look at Infamy Infamy. Um, and I will now go through a loot haul that which we've purchased to go with it. So as you can see, this is the, uh, some of the Victorix miniatures we've purchased for the, uh, the Britons so far. Um, we do need to get some uh, slingers and that, which we'll pick them up from uh, Spec Warlord. I expect we'll get a pack of those from. So we've got some unit, a pack of Gallic cavalry, um, our Gallic armored warriors, Gallic chariots, and obviously Gallic normal warriors. So obviously these ones will do the nobles, and we'll do the normal warriors up as the levy and the standard warriors. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, quite a good start, and that should build most of what we want from that list. Like I said, without the slingers. Um, all these figures that I'm about to show you, we've sort of purchased from good, good friends of ours from uh, Entoyment Wargame and Hobby Centre down in Paul in Dorset. Um, and if you're in Paul, in Paul, check them out. They're a really good gaming centre and, great, and a very good Aladdin's Cave store. Um, so that's, that's those ones there. So I'll show you the Romans that I've purchased. So there we have it. That's the early Imperial Roman forces uh, blisters that I've bought from uh, via Victrix from Entoyment. Um, so 
two groups, two packets of Roman legionaries, a mix, so I can have a mix of attacking and advancing. Uh, so I think that looked quite good, it's sort of a bit more narrative there. Um, a unit, a pack of um, auxiliary um, Roman Imperial Cavalry. So again, they'll do for me auxiliaries and things like that. And obviously the Roman Auxiliary Infantry. So that again is, with the cavalry being a support option or in one of the lists, it's actually a core choice. Um, but it'll give me a good um, sort of stand, starting force if I can build the Legionary Force. I can make a good way ahead to do the Auxiliary Force. Um, list that's in there and obviously they can be used for support uh, elements as well. I'm short of um, archers, I like the Avatine Miniatures archers but if you go on to Avatine Miniatures at the moment he's temporarily removed the early Imperial Roman uh, figures that he does, list he does because obviously he's been overwhelmed <laughs> with um, the amount of people ordering for playing in for me. So, he has put a note out on his Facebook page and his website and that saying that they will be back. They're just retooling and remoding and they will be back. Well, there you have it. That's that's what we've purchased and that. Um, and like I said, you know, it, I think it's going to be a great game, uh, a lot of fun. And certainly you can certainly characterise and personalise the forces and that you can, you can build. Um, so I expect we'll be doing videos of updates as the forces are getting built and painted. Um, so you can sort of follow along with us as we're doing that. And, and no doubt we will do some battle reports, etc. at some time, once all of both forces and that are built up. Um, quick shout out a minute to good friends of ours um, of the Devon War Games group. Um, you may know, you might be a member actually of Jonathan Jones' uh, YouTube channel. He's recently done some excellent uh, rigging for the Black Sea ship. He's the, obviously the club president and that, great guy. I actually got him playing fantasy, which was apparently never gonna happen but I did the last time I was there. So that's my achievement there. <laughs> and also uh, vice president there is um, Jason Rowles and his son, Christopher. Guys, I haven't forgotten about you guys coming up to the bunker and playing a really big Star Wars Legion game. Um, we're, we're eager to do it, um, as you guys know. And as uh, soon as obviously things ease, ease a little bit more, we'll get you in the bunker and we'll have a really big game and sort of like a, a meet up again and, and, uh, and go from there. Um, so there we have it. Um, any, anything else I want to say? No, not really at this stage, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please like the video, share it, and obviously if you're new to the channel, uh, thank you very much for watching and please sort of subscribe and then obviously hit the notification for receiving notifications when we put another video up. Um, and until next time, stay safe guys and uh, happy wargaming. Mm -hmm.